happy belated Back to the Future Day, everybody! Ah, yes, I hope everybody's enjoying playing as the DeLorean in Rocket League. That was a very cool move on your guys' part, by the way. Really awesome. Man, it, it, no matter how much time goes by, it still blows my mind how far ahead of its time that movie was. Like, think of all the things it predicted. Like, dehydrated food, 3D movies, we had phones on our glasses for a while before we realized it was a terrible idea. We've got real, legitimate hoverboards now you can buy for like a hundred bucks. Shame the Cubs got eliminated from the World Series, but hey, we can't have everything, right? I've talked before on this channel about the idea of future-proofing. In a creative sense, future-proofing yourself is basically the willingness to keep an open mind, because new ideas can present great solutions to old problems, and if you're the only one who doesn't see that, the rest of the world is going to leave you behind. This is why even though I don't like the whole app format Windows has adopted since version 8, I still see the value in learning how to use it, because that's just where technology is now. And this is why the latest news about Black Ops 3 has piqued my interest so much. Because what the latest Call of Duty is planning on doing with its campaign is one new idea I think is definitely worth discussing. Jason Blundell of Treyarch recently told Eurogamer that their latest game will allow you to skip to any mission in the single player mode anytime you like. Their reasoning behind this decision is that we live in an on-demand culture. Services like Netflix and Crunchyroll are giving people way more choices than they ever had in terms of entertainment, and in Treyarch's opinion, this is how video games can start to do it. In their mind, you paid for this piece of software, so you're free to enjoy it however you like. Except instead of having to use complex modding tools to achieve this effect, now they're making it easy and just giving you the option. I think my initial reaction to this was how most people felt, and that is utterly confused. I mean, if I'm being frank, this goes against so many things I was taught about game design. How it works in my mind is that you start the player with the basic concepts. You give them nice, easy levels to teach them the controls and get them prepared for the journey ahead. Then you spend the next few levels building on those mechanics, introducing different tools or nuances to the formula, and slowly reinforcing everything you learned in level 1. The goal of this is that by the end, you have one final level that tests everything you've learned in one massive challenge. It's tough, and you'll have to use every trick you've been taught, but once you've won, you feel incredibly accomplished. The satisfaction comes from the fact that you've built and mastered a skill set, a very specific skill set that'll only be marginally applicable to other games you play in the future, but still. Granted, this isn't always the case. If you're playing something like a visual novel, for instance, the concept of progressive difficulty doesn't necessarily apply. Then again, those kinds of games present a different problem in that aspect, considering that if you skipped straight over an entire chapter, you might be left completely lost in the narrative, or miss some genuinely good plot twists. And this is where I think Call of Duty might be on the right track, because for this particular series, I don't think either of those problems are applicable. Every single review I've ever watched for any game in the franchise describes the campaign not as a gripping and moving tale, but as either a framing point for some of the mechanics you'll encounter online, or as a sequence of set pieces that are cool in their own right, but have no real link to each other. Call of Duty campaigns don't feel like journeys, really. Thematically, you don't feel like you're starting from the bottom and moving up, and considering you bounce perspectives from character to character so much anyway, having the game always dangling more cool toys to play with in front of you like a set of keys seems like a perfect fit. You're not really missing much by skipping over a chapter in Call of Duty, but what you are doing by using the skip is potentially making the next game even better. Look, it's no secret that game developers have analytics for everything. They could tell you not only exactly how many headshots their community scored yesterday, but also which weapons contributed the most to that number. By analyzing which chapters people choose to leave in the dust, they effectively get the clearest possible picture of which parts of the game people don't enjoy. Imagine what you could do with that kind of information. How much more satisfying DLC and future entries in the series will be when Treyarch has learned how to make these campaigns all killer and no filler. Plus, if I'm being brutal about this, having systems like this in place would mean that developers would have no excuse for poor design. 
All that hard work and effort that went into making this stage would go to waste if they simply didn't deliver what their audience was looking for. And I think that's the kind of tough love that any artistic mind can benefit from sometimes. In that sense, I think a lot of the people who are arguing against this idea are looking at it the wrong way. Think about this, how did Nintendo combat used game sales? By giving us games like Hyrule Warriors, whose additional downloadable offerings, including all the free ones, were so substantial that it made you want to keep the game longer than you might have otherwise. The only reason I'm still holding on to Splatoon is because I get free updates every other week. The only reason I'm still holding on to my copy of Smash Brothers is the fleeting hope that Shantae will become a playable character. And believe me, if she does, this is one game I will never, ever sell. You see how much more effective a method this is than DRM or Season Passes? How much more rewarding this is to both the companies and the consumers? Same principle. Don't get mad at people for wanting more options, get mad at the developers who can't make a game worth playing all the way through in the first place. Besides, if you're any kind of creator worth your salt, you'll learn to jump through hoops for your audience, not the other way around. Producers serve consumers. End of story. Which leads me into the other major criticism I've heard about this system. What's stopping people from just skipping to the end of the game? Well, gee, I thought that would have been obvious from the fact that video games are frigging expensive! Like, seriously, do you have any idea the multitude of ways I could entertain myself for the cost of a brand new PS4 title? I paid 60 bucks for this thing, so I fully intend to get 60 bucks worth of entertainment out of it. But on that same note, you cannot look me straight in the eye and tell me there isn't a part of even the games you love that you can't stand to play. If I could skip Grunty Industries and Banjo-Tooie, I would. If I could pass over the library in the original Halo, I I would, and oh god, if I could leave behind the snowball fight in Until Dawn, I would every freaking time. I'd play everything else. I don't want to skip over the entire game, maybe just like 5% of it. Or hell, I remember times I used a Game Shark to go straight to Hailfire Peak. That was my favorite level. When I really sit down and think about being able to enjoy my games my way, I start to realize maybe this idea doesn't deserve the amount of animosity it's gotten. Will it ultimately be good or bad? That's just it. We don't know yet. But that's probably the biggest positive. Think of what we could learn by simply giving it a go in a few different games. It might be the future, it might be a failed experiment, or, like most other game mechanics, could fall somewhere in the middle and work best in certain genres over others. But we'll never know if we never even give it a try. So I guess it's the point where I make myself look stupid by making my own silly predictions for the future, eh? Uh, let's see here. By 2040, I predict that... Augmented reality games will be in full swing. Uh, mobile phone devices will be so powerful as a gaming platform, it'll render every home console except for the PC pretty much useless. I predict that Konami will release Metal Gear Solid 8 to universal disdain, and... Ah, what the hell? Beyond Good and Evil 2.